So in this video we are going to learn how to find out the areas of irregular figures okay so this is first method we are going to understand is the trapezoidal method okay trapezoidal method basically in that what happens let us try to understand so for any irregular figures so here you can see let me consider this as x axis and this as y axis okay here one shape is there irregular shape suppose it is like this some irregular sort of shape okay it is ending over here let us consider now here we need to find out the area of this part this portion this whole portion that means let me name it as this is x axis this is y axis okay fine so here we have one point here one point here the third point and here let me consider the fourth point okay so a b c d so we have to find out the area of a b c d irregular shape or the figure the first step in trapezoidal i am talking about trapezoidal rule in that the first step is that you have to divide this base base in the sense here it is a d this base you have to divide into equal number of intervals okay that equal number of intervals that means base you have to divide this is the first step base ad whatever the base is there that you have to divide into equal number of intervals which is having the equal width equal width okay will name it as d small letter d okay so let me see here let us see here i am going to divide the shape into the first part over here first part over here second part third fourth fifth sixth and the last part is over here seventh okay so the here the this line is also considered this is this will be so what i should do i should just name it how should i how can i name it this part is this portion is nothing but what is the measurement of this portion that is nothing but in y axis you have to see only the ordinate what do you mean ordinate ordinate is nothing but the y axis whatever the number is there that is the ordinate x comma y you might have studied right so here y is nothing but the ordinate so in y axis you have to see in order to identify this measurement okay this all the lines measurement so my second step will be second step will be to find out or to accurately measure the ordinates what kind of ordinates let me just name it okay so one question will arise after the first step that is nothing but how many number of parts or how many number of equal intervals should i make okay so it depends on you the more number of, or we can say the greater number of intervals the greater will be the accuracy accuracy means the whatever the value area of this figure we are getting if you if you go for more number of parts more number of parts means i am talking about this parts okay this lines equal number of intervals if you are making more number of equal number of intervals therefore the the answer of the area of this irregular figure using this rule will be more accurate okay so greater the number of intervals greater the number of intervals greater will be the accuracy accuracy in the sense the accurate answer or the approximate answer we are getting that that will be very much accurate precise okay so here i am taking let me just name it as y1 y2 y3 y4 y5 y6 y7 and y8 okay so y1 is this one this line okay y2 this line y3 this line so on till y8 why am i naming it as y because we are going to measure it with respect to this axis right y axis this measurement 
see if i am going to ask you what is this measurement a b so basically what i am going to do i am just going to measure it from y axis so suppose here 0 0 1 2 3 and this is 4 suppose so i can say that it is a is lying at 4 and b is at 0 so it is nothing but 4 units correct the measurement will be 4 that's what i am trying to get okay now y1 y2 y3 y4 y5 y6 y7 y8 this all things you have to accurately measure this is my second step so second step is basically to measure the ordinates that means y1 y2 y3 so on till y8 okay how much ever you are considering okay it can be y9 y10 also as i said before this thing you remember greater number of intervals get rid of the accuracy this is the second step let us go for the third step third step is so simple you have to just put the fun formula so formula is basically area of a b c d this figure will be equal to third step is nothing but directly substituting the formula okay width of interval width of interval width of interval is nothing but equal number of intervals are there okay see here i am just drawing parts uh, in if you see one graph you will understand okay we'll take up, take up one problem in that you will understand that how we are applying this and all so width of the interval will be equal to that thing you have to multiply with half of first plus last coordinate last ordinate plus sum of remaining ordinates this is one simple formula that is nothing but width of interval it will be same that will be d width of interval means the the difference between y1 and y2 that is d y2 and y3 d y4 y3 and y4 d like that so on till last thing d so width of this interval this gap you can see between the parts i have taken y1 y2 y3 that should be equal interval equally it should be distributed okay that, that is the meaning of the first step itself okay equal intervals now here width of the interval will be d that you have to find out then half of first and last call ordinate first ordinate is y1 so i have to put y1 plus last ordinate here i have taken y8 so it will be y8 plus sum of remaining ordinates remaining ordinates means how many ordinates i have from y1 to till y8 i have so y1 and y8 i have already included first and last ordinate remaining ordinates will be y2 y3 y4 y5 y6 plus y7 so this will be the last remaining ordinates so this completes the formula so this is how you have to apply this is in the case of trapezoidal rule so one question we are taking here a car starts from rest and its speed is measured every second for six seconds okay so time is there speed is there of the car time versus speed we have to draw the graph first okay so time it starts from zero seconds one two three four five six that means you can see here we have only equal number of intervals right the width of width from this you can understand what will be the width width will be one one second okay so we'll first draw the uh, this thing graph zero comma zero right this is zero comma zero that will be this point next one one comma two point five one is here comma 2.5 will be around this part half of this so here 2 comma 5.5 2 comma 5.5 around here 3 comma 8.75 8.75 below 10 below 10 4 comma 12.5 around here 5 comma 17.5 above 15 it will come so around here and 6 comma 24 24 will be around here okay so if i join this
okay it is going like that okay exponentially it will increase so basic thing is that here they have already given the intervals also the parts so if we join these all parts so do we have to draw the graph or we can directly uh, just substitute the formulas yes of course you can directly substitute the formulas because see here area of this figure will be equal to see width of the interval that is that was our formula width of the interval means here you can see the interval is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 that means these are nothing but the parts y1 y2 y3 y4 so here if i see the difference between each parts will be one one seconds so width will be one into half of the first ordinate and <coughs> first ordinate plus last ordinate first ordinate means what it will be zero first ordinate will be zero speed zero last ordinate will be 24 this is x this is y okay so zero plus 24 plus the remaining ordinates remaining ordinates means i have to add all this the y parts that is 2.5 plus 5.5 plus 8.75 plus 12.5 plus 17.5 adding all this i'll get answer as 58.75 meters so it is not necessary you have to make the graph then substitute the formulas okay because they have directly given the table time we are taking it as x axis so it is x y axis it will be uh, speed so y or y parts only we are taking right x thing we are just seeing the intervals the width width will be one seconds that's why we are taking here one okay then half of first ordinate last ordinate then remaining ordinates that's it okay it is not necessary you have to make the graph first then substitute but it depends on whether you are writing some paper in which they have uh, so suppose you are asking for six marks or something so they definitely you have to draw the graph and put the values also like here 24 what is the value here 17.5 here 12.5 here 8.75 5.5 5 2.5 and last one is zero okay here zero is also there then here directly you can put the values.